Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut, and this is part 3 in a series of speed test comparison videos. In this one, we're going to be going over KDE Plasma and some of the distributions that use KDE as their primary desktop environment. Particularly, we're going to be going over Kubuntu, KDE Neon, OpenSUSE, and Manjaro KDE. So ultimately, we have OpenSUSE representing itself, we have Manjaro representing Arch, and then we have the two uh, KDE Neon and Kubuntu representing the Ubuntu Debian base. We'll start with some general side-by-side -side speed tests to test the snappiness, boot time, install time, things like that. And then later on, we're gonna get into some of the benchmarking so we can actually compare these side-by-sides with some actual scores. Now, some of these distributions do better in certain categories, so make sure you watch this all the way through. And I will note, I do say OpenSUSE a lot during the actual benchmarking recording, so I do apologize for that. Just like last time, we're going to be using two different machines to run these benchmarks. We're going to be using my primary desktop machine to represent newer, better hardware. And then we're going to be using my Lenovo ThinkPad T450 to kind of represent older, slower hardware. Granted, that uh, ThinkPad is one of my favorite machines I own. We started off with some general side-by-side -side speed testing, first with the installation of these distributions. Manjaro finished the install at under 3 minutes, followed by the Ubuntu-based distributions at around the 5 and 6 minute mark, and then finally OpenSUSE installed in just about 11 minutes. And then we ran a side-by-side -side boot speed test, and KDE Neon was the clear winner, followed up by Kubuntu then Manjaro, and then finally OpenSUSE. I will note you can make Manjaro boot quicker by editing the grub delay settings, and doing this would put Manjaro in second, barely being beat out by KDE Neon. Once booted into the system, we opened up the default file manager. OpenSUSE did have a slight advantage, but everything overall was neck to neck. With this open, I plugged in a USB 3.0 that had some media files and a large benchmarking tool on the drive that we will be using later. So I moved all these over into the home directory and performed a file transfer speed test. There were some surprising results here. Most of the distributions performed this at right under three seconds, but KDE Neon finished the transfer in about eight seconds. With these files transferred, I opened up a 8K photo to see if there'd be any significant differences. And this followed nearly the same results as opening up the file manager with OpenSUSE having a slight advantage and everything else slightly trailing behind. Next, I opened up a 1080p video in VLC, and this time it was so close that I had to go frame by frame just to see any differences, so we'll go ahead and call this one a tie. Opening up Firefox gave a slight lead to OpenSUSE again, followed by Kubuntu, and then tying for the last two was Manjaro and KDE Neon. Next, I went ahead and opened up GIMP, and there was a three-way tie, but Kubuntu did fall slightly behind. And once GIMP was open, we ran a quick filter render benchmark, and for this, I went and created a 1920 by 1080 canvas. And then under filters, I went down to render and selected the lava filter. I went ahead and started all of these at the exact same time. And in this test, Manjaro had a lead over OpenSUSE, followed by KDE Neon, and then Kubuntu came in last. So now that we saw some of these side-by-side -side speed tests on the ThinkPad, let's go ahead and load up some of these benchmarks and see how these distributions compare on both the old and new hardware. Starting with a tool called C-Ray. This is a ray tracing tool that will help us measure our floating point CPU performance. After running this test, we can see that on the ThinkPad, Kubuntu barely beat out OpenSUSE while on the desktop we had flipped results with KDE Neon in the lead. Next, we ran gzip compress benchmark that will measure the time it takes to compress a large directory of files. On the ThinkPad, KDE Neon had a slight advantage and Manjaro fell about 3 seconds behind. On the desktop, OpenSUSE had a narrow lead with Manjaro again 3 seconds behind. After that, we ran a basic RAM speed test and we can see that Manjaro had better performance on the older hardware while OpenSUSE utilized the newer components the best. For the next test, we ran a benchmark to see how long the systems would take to compile the entire Linux kernel. OpenSUSE outperformed everything on the ThinkPad and desktop by a fairly decent margin. And in this case, Manjaro actually came in last by an even larger margin. And I'm going to take just a quick minute to interject because Manjaro, I, kinda, I have a slight bias towards it. It's my personal... A daily driver for a Linux distribution and I didn't want to believe these results at first so I did run it a couple more times. I even did it on a cold boot when the computer first turned on and it was 
basically the same results, so this holds true. Now we're going to be getting to some of the graphic benchmarking, starting with running GL Mark II to test the open GL performance on both of these systems. On the ThinkPad, it ran at the default settings, while on the desktop, I went ahead and set a custom setting to run it at 1080p. Looking at the scores in between both of these systems, we see that OpenSUSE and Manjaro trade the first and second place, with OpenSUSE scoring the best on the ThinkPad and Manjaro scoring the best on the desktop. After this, we dived a little bit deeper into the graphics performance and ran the Superposition Benchmarking Tool on the desktop at a medium preset. Across the board, they had a very comparable performance with each distribution sitting at an average frames per second of right about 58. Now, taking everything in consideration and the scores that Superposition gives us, we can see that OpenSUSE had the best overall performance followed by Kubuntu. And now we're going to take a look at the test that is most important to me, and that is the Kaden Live Render Test. All of the systems rendered out the same 2 minute and 30 second clip at full quality in a .webm format. Now with these tests, we had similar but not as dramatic results as the GNOME tests. Manjaro had a lead over OpenSUSE by nearly 30 seconds on the ThinkPad followed by the Ubuntu-based systems. On the desktop, OpenSUSE was a lot closer but it barely missed out by a second, both Kubuntu and KDE Neon finished up about 10 seconds later. Now after messing around for a little bit in Kaden Live, we jumped into my most used application of them all. Firefox. From here, I went ahead and went over to Basemark Web 3.0, which will test and run your browser through about 20 different real-world tests to score your browser's performance. After running these, overall we can see that Manjaro scored the best on the ThinkPad and KDE Neon actually did the best on the desktop, with Kubuntu close behind. Last but not least, we have Geekbench 5. Now, Geekbench 5 will run a wide variety of tests to give your system a generalized score. If you're interested in some of the full results for Geekbench that I ran on the ThinkPad, there'll be a link to those in the description. After running the tests on both systems, we can see that KDE Neon barely beat out the others on the ThinkPad for single core performance, and OpenSUSE had better multi core performance. And then on the desktop, OpenSUSE was a clear winner in both single and multi core performance, followed by Manjaro's. So that about wraps up our benchmarking, and there were definitely some surprising results. I went into this thinking Manjaro was absolutely going to dominate everything, and it ended up that OpenSUSE was a very, very good competitor, and it seems to have better performance when it comes to actual CPU utilization, compiling software, things like that. Both Kubuntu and KDE Neon are both great, they're both super snappy, they both took some wins in certain categories, and Manjaro was either first or second in most of these tests. All of these are good. Like I said in my previous video, don't use this as a deciding factor on, well, the primary deciding factor on what distribution you end up going with. That choice should heavily rely on the actual software managers and the update structures in the distributions on top of the default supported desktop environment. So I do hope that you enjoyed this. Please subscribe for more content like this. And if you're interested in more, I do have a playlist with more speed tests, including so far I've done a GNOME one, and then a general speed test of Windows versus Manjaro and Ubuntu. There will be more to come, so leave down below some uh, recommendations or some uh, requests on the uh, kind of speed test that you would like me to do in the future. Also coming pretty soon to this channel, there's going to be a vanilla Debian versus Arch versus Windows 10, so it's kind of a more fair comparison of the primary operating systems with this kind of speed test format. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day, and goodbye. Oh, did you see that catch? I just put these up. I, uh, they're, they're soundproofing devices, but my adhesive isn't that good yet.